You know the rules. I'm not doing it. You are doing I'm it. I'm not doing it. Low card does the favor. Buck up and get with the program. Ha ha ha. See you in San Francisco. Well, maybe Fiona could host the show. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Probably won't get her, though. Why? She's too busy being surly and not eating? She's too busy being surly and not eating and writing songs. Okay? <laughs> that is busy. That's, that's very busy. That's three things. You try writing a whole album while you're hungry. In your underwear. Hungry. While you're... Yeah. Yeah. Tonight. Starring Margaret Cho. Bobcat Goldway. Mark Marin. I did live in San Francisco for one month. Uh, it was about 1990 or 91 when I participated in the San Francisco comedy competition and scored dead last, <laughs> lowest score that had ever happened in the competition. <laughs> so I feel pretty good about coming home to that feeling <laughs> that I had at that time. So anyway, I want to just start off by saying thank you to the mermen up there. <laughs> So anyway, um, this, this benefit also, this show, is not just all about getting laughs. It is about raising money for Boston's Cam Neely Foundation, which um, Dennis Leary, will, who is a big mover and shaker in that movement, will tell you more about later. And also working with the American Cancer Society for kids and families dealing with cancer. So, have a big hand for cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Who could be a more unwieldy mouthpiece for something like that than me? I'm like totally inarticulate about the things that are good in life, like <laughs> benefits and all. But um, I always know when I'm in San Francisco, when you go to a movie and you watch the trailers at the beginning and this is what you hear in the theater. <laughs> we have a problem with everything. So we're very correct here, like when I am asked paper or plastic here, I'm, um, uh, well, whatever you think, I don't know, about paper, or should I have brought my own bag, or when I get coffee, do I need to bring my own mug because I'm not eco-friendly? And speaking of, a little aside here, went to get coffee today on Polk Street, flirting with the cute guy behind the counter, you know, feeling pretty good about myself, all that. Get home, lipstick covering my teeth, like... These two over here, under here, there was like a dot of lipstick and also right here on my nose. <laughs> the hell was that about? <laughs> so yesterday was Halloween. I don't know when this airs, but for, for you know, for real, yesterday was Halloween. <laughs> and uh, so I was flying in here from Toronto and everybody at the airport, all the flight attendants, the service people were dressed as characters like whatever and you know what it seemed like such a good idea to them all I think in the morning but when you see like a flight attendant arguing in the old fright wig with a disgruntled passenger or like the little tramp you know stewardess having a hard time with the drunk guy it is not really that fun anymore and I'm sure they just regretted you know the grease paint and the uh, the nose glasses when they're talking about seating issues and also I'm just I'm just a little tired of, of airlines kind of patting themselves on the back for doing their job. Like, um, after they inconvenience you for a very long time in the holding pen, and then kind of hustle you on the plane after they're very late, and then this is literally what a store just said to me about a month ago. Let's go, take your seat, on the double, on the double. She, and I just looked at her like, did you just on the double me twice? I'm 30, 33 years, did you just on the double me? Like, so anyway, so then, they're like, please just punch. Oh, well, we got you here early. We got made up some time. Got here, aren't we the best? Woo! But guess what? Gate's not ready. You know, big <laughs> gate's not ready. So that's like running to the car when it's raining out, but the guy with the car keys is like 50 feet behind you. It's just <laughs> same principle. And by the way, I'm wearing very tall, 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 very tall shoes. I'm from New Jersey. Very tall shoes. <laughs> Are you sorry for me? <laughs> Got tall shoes on so I can drink more. Because I hear if you have height, you can drink more. Visa is the preferred card for comics com coming up. Mark Marin. Nineteen ninety. 
1998, the year of Godzilla. You know, so I'm, not, I'm just going to say this as a guy. I don't like other guys saying anything about me. the f*** away from them. Am I by myself on this issue? Have you ever said nice pants to a guy? If you're a guy? No. I don't think I've ever said nice pants in my life to a guy. Well, the Pope, but you know. Hi, this is Dennis Leary. I'm here in Boston for the third annual Comics Come Home. We raise money for the Cam Neely Foundation and the American Cancer Society. We're thrilled that the day's finally here that we are going to actually start the renovations. Donations from past shows help build the Neely House here in Boston. It's a special home where families of cancer patients can live while their loved ones are in the hospital. This year, we've actually expanded and we have our first Comics Come Home sort of satellite show which is happening in San Francisco. That's where Janine Garofalo and friends are raising money for the American Cancer Society's special programs for kids and families facing cancer. So please call the number at the bottom of your screen. It should be someplace right about in here and make a donation, okay? Because um, it's a good cause and uh, it's a very funny show. Woo! Wow, did you see I almost twisted my ankle on my tall drinking shoes? <laughs> so, the next gentleman coming out uh, is a regular on Conan O'Brien and Comedy Central and he's had his own HBO special. Please welcome the well-turned-out Mark Maron. <laughs> Thank you! Thank you! Look at this. Comics come home in stone. You know, I'm not a big nostalgia fan, and I really had thought that we'd gotten rid of Elton John. Um, and then, you know, it dawned on me, just because you remember the song doesn't mean it was good. <laughs> Let me explain. Two days ago, I go out and buy a CD by a band I don't even like. So I had to ask myself, well, how did this happen? What am I, retarded? What am I, an idiot? And then I realized, if you watch, if you listen to the radio, or you watch MTV enough, you keep getting hit in the head with the same song, till one day you just snap and go, must have Oasis, you know? <laughs> so I decided to take back my brain from this corporate control, and I went and returned the CD, and in rebellion, in exchange, I got a CD of traditional Indian music from India. Go ahead and laugh, lady, but let me tell you something. <laughs> There's a song on there, 59 minutes long. That's value. I'm telling you, it's 20 minutes before the drums kick in. But if you're really listening, they couldn't come in a second sooner. And I was trying to convince this friend of mine that this was the best music ever. And we... And I said, wait. And those drums came rolling in. He just said, hey. I stand corrected. Oh, God. I'm happy to be back in San Francisco. I, I used to live down the Mission here. And I, li I live in... Oh, good, the Mission. Yeah. One guy going... Yeah, what a joy it is. Yeah. Hey, used condom. Okay. Fresh vomit. Mmm. <laughs> oh, look, a broken jar of mayonnaise and a dog licking it. Good morning. Yeah. I um, I just had a birthday. I turned 34 years old. Uh, that's all right. No big deal. And you realize it in weird ways. Like recently, I realized teenage girls don't even acknowledge me. <laughs> as a sexual being anymore. No, 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 don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying I want to have sex with teenage girls, but hey, throw me a bone. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> How about a smile? Cute t-shirt. Look at me! <laughs> Nothing. Unless they turn to their friends and go, hey, why is that weird guy looking at us? <laughs> What's he doing at the mall? I'm lying. Uh, of course I want to have sex with teenage girls. I mean, <laughs> doesn't everyone? I mean, that's why there's a law. <laughs> what, do you think they pulled 18 out of a hat? 
No, a couple of founding fathers got together and said, they're having sex with our daughters. Someone make a rule. I own land, damn it. All right, now my friend brought me to this strip bar in LA. This was recently. And I got a table dance. And this is where a woman dances naked for you right in front of you. And I had never had one before this point, And I really didn't know how to behave. I mean, what's proper etiquette during a table dance? I mean, what, are you just supposed to sit there and go, hey. Hey. So I started conversation, because it was awkward, you know? So I said, so what do you do during the day? Swear to God, true. She looks at me and she goes, I'm a student. <laughs> and I go, really? Where, where do you study? She puts her breasts in my face, all right, and just goes, UCLA. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, great. And, and what are you studying over there? She goes, psychology and English literature. <laughs> but that's not the topper, all right? Then she turns around, all right? Her ass is this close to my face, children. <laughs> and I believed her. Thank you very much, people. Coming up, Margaret. Yeah! This next superstar coming to the stage is a San Francisco native. Please welcome Margaret Cho. Oh, thank you very much. So here's a story. My mother called me two months ago and left me this message on my machine. Boop. Hi, it's mommy. I call to tell you two things. Number one, grandma and grandpa are gonna die. I don't know when they gonna die, but sometime. So I want you to not eat a bus because if they die, I will call you and you have to come home. <laughs> Don't say that you have a show or you are busy. You have to come home. <laughs> if they die, I call you, you come home. Did you get that shampoo I sent you? I sent you shampoo that is good for fine hair. And you just use a little bit and then you leather and rinse. But don't repeat. You don't have to repeat. But it's so good and I sent it to you maybe two weeks ago. But I don't know if you received because you did not call mommy. So maybe it took it to somebody else's house. You better go outside because sometimes when you're not home, they leave a yellow slip. And it will not say shampoo from mommy. Because they don't know what it is, but I know and you know it's a shampoo. <laughs> to review. <laughs> Number one, grandma and grandpa are gonna die. Number two, did you get that shampoo I sent you? Boop. so weirdly obsessed with sex and I can't really explain what it is like I'm just 
I think it's amazing. Like, I'm just amazed by it, constantly. I, I, I watch pornos and stuff, and I can't believe it. Like, I grew up so Christian that when I see naked people, I just freak out. You know, I just freak out. And um, I happen to like old style, like 70s style porno, like old school, like European porno, because I like a natural body. And, because uh, the women in these, like, Newport or whatever, their, their boobs are just so weird and high and far apart. It just looks weird. It looks like, you know, the goldfish with the puffy eyes. <laughs> I love pornos because I'm, I'm just a huge fan of the penis. Can I just say I just love penis? They're, like, the greatest thing. And they're all different, like snowflakes. And, <laughs> They're just, I like them all. They're, they're all good, except okay, there's one kind that I have a weird thing with. Okay, it's the kind, all right. You know, it's, okay, you know when it's a grower, not a shower? And that's when it starts off like really small and you don't think it's gonna be anything and then a breeze goes by and suddenly it's like an elephant trunk. It's like, ah, this huge thing. And I'm like, no, that's like too, no, I, that's too, I want like half that. That's way too much. That is like, ugh, can we like push some of that back in, you know? Is there like a crank back here to crank that? I can't, that is too much for me, you know? Cause like when I go to Subway, I don't get the foot long. I get the six incher. Because I know I can't eat all that, frankly. And Visa is the preferred card for comics come home. Coming up, Tom Rhodes. At the Orpheum Theater here in Boston for a sold-out show. It's Comics Come Home 3. And I'm um, joining some big wigs tonight on stage. Dennis Leary, uh, John Stewart, and a bunch of people from the Boston area and New York that uh, started out here. And uh, we're asking you to send in a donation. It's all benefiting the American Cancer Society. And you can do that by calling the number at the very bottom of your screen. Please welcome Dennis Leary. Hello, Boston. Thank you guys for supporting us for the last three years with that. Give yourselves a round of applause for that. It's great. It's up and running. Yeah, my wife and I are going through a rough time right now with our kids because uh, they're into Hanson. Oh, yeah. I love my kids. We're trying to bring them up the right way. We're not spanking them. We find that we don't have to spank them. We find that waving the guns around pretty much gets the job done. I just want some quiet, that's all I want. Not that dangerous quiet. If you have kids, you know the dangerous quiet? The good quiet's when they're in bed at night and you just go, ah. The dangerous quiet's the one during the day when they're in the house, playing and you're in the kitchen reading the paper. After about 15 minutes, slowly it dawns on you. Hey, wait a minute. Hello? Uh-oh. Hello? You go room to room, no kids anywhere. Hello? I go by the bathroom, I hear this little tiny voice inside the bathroom singing, my daughter. Why is she taking a bath at 3 o'clock in the afternoon? She hates taking baths. I open the door, you know what she's doing? Giving the dog a bath in the toilet. Yeah, and like some weird Vegas magician, the great Liratini, I gotta pull a dog out of a toilet. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and no explanation from her. What were you doing? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And now uh, let's turn things over to Janine Garofalo in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so um, this next gentleman coming to the stage, you may know from his NBC sitcom, Mr. Rhodes, and also a show he developed and starred in and produced for Comedy Central called Viva Vietnam. Please welcome seven-year San Franciscan, Tom Rhodes. Yes. Oh, yeah. San Francisco. My favorite city in the world. Yes. Love it here, man. I lived here for seven years. Such a great city to exist, you know? 
When I lived here, whenever I would get depressed, I would go over to the Castro, the gay neighborhood. When I was depressed and I'd try on some big orange freaky shoes just so I could hear the salesman go, those are fabulicious. Those are so you. <laughs> yeah, they are kind of me. I got that gig coming up in Knoxville. I want to make an impression. <laughs> Think about it, man. We could be up in space, stuck on a little dinky space station with no electricity, with two stinky Russian guys. Damn it, you're gay? Didn't they pack any underarm deodorant in your stuff? Have a Tic Tac, Vladimir. You know one Russian cabbage fart will screw up an entire space mission. Oh, we did it again. I'm getting out of here. Do you think there's life in outer space, huh? Why not? We're one planet of millions. I didn't even know North America was here 500 years ago. It's possible. I think there's life in outer space, sure. But they think we're the Alabama of the universe. <laughs> they know we're here. They just don't want nothing to do with us. Yeah. <laughs> They're out there buzzing around. Don't let them see you. Jesus. <laughs> I think there's only one way to find out if there's life in outer space, man. We need to take some big, huge pioneer speakers and blast Jimi Hendrix music into outer space. Yeah, it's the only way to find out. Jimmy could find aliens, man. You can almost see the little alien heads turn. What the f was that? I think they got weed down there. Give the Indians credit. You know, the Indians had to smoke a lot of weeds before they found the right one. Oh, this isn't it. <laughs> Think the Indians ever got paranoid when they were all smoked up? Was that a deer? <laughs> Cup it, man. I think it's the chief. <laughs> hey, what are those white guys doing over there, man? I think they're taking our... <laughs> yeah, it's sad, man. What happened to the Indians on casinos? We could learn so much from them. I think we ought to tear up all the freeways and give everything back to the Indians. Yeah. yeah. Just to see the look on their face. Fuck their chief tumbling dice. <laughs> you and brave little double down. You got a big job ahead of you. Well, you guys are beautiful, man. Listen, if you learn nothing else this evening or nothing else in your lifetime, please remember that there's no such thing as death. Life is a journey. It's continuous and never ending. So, if you're on a plane and you know it's going down and it's going to crash or something, don't freak life. Treat it like a roller coaster ride. Woo! Woo! You guys are great. Well, the big foundation. So, uh, so please donate your money, you rich bastards. stage is a smarty pants and he's very funny and I love him very much. Please welcome Patton Oswalt. I used to on the uh, corner of Mug Whitey and Stab Whitey. That was my neighborhood. <laughs> I was right at that. That was my little corner of the world. So, uh, Oh, let her see my old... The, uh... uh, 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 okay. okay. Halloween's my favorite holiday. That holiday rocks! It's the best holiday. Don't... And especially right now, there's this guy named Bob Larson who is my favorite uh, radio and TV evangelist. He's just a raisin cake. He isn't even on this planet anymore. You know. <laughs> but this guy, Bob Larson, says that uh, Halloween is, is the devil's holiday. It's the devil's day. 
And I, you know, okay, let's say, let's say that Halloween is the devil's holiday. Like he actually controls it and he's making a profit from it. What a lame ass devil. You know, sitting down in the depths of hell going, okay, let's see, I've, I've, I've got control of most of the major corporations on the planet. I've got them churning out toxic waste and weapons, and I'm controlling most of the media, too, and it's making people complacent and non-questioning, and my God, I've got thousands of millions of people that have sold their souls and given over their very integrity just for my will, but, but I need candy. Yes, I... Now, how do I... How will I get some candy down here? I need... I could... I could amortize some of the rolling stock with the bigger corporations and use that cash to be... No, damn it! No, rainy day, rainy day. Wait a minute, let me think. Um... I'll get the children of the world to dress as hobos and Power Rangers. And I'll send them out and threaten the adults with acts of petty vandalism. And then I'll have all the bite-sized three musketeers I need! <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. I am Satan! So, uh, this next thing is something that I hate. I despise this thing I'm about to talk about, but I am actively supporting its existence. Uh, live from the Actors Studio on the Bravo Network with your host, James Lipton, the most hateful person ever to walk the earth. This guy, have you, has anyone here seen, obviously some of you have seen this show on Bravo. Well, if you haven't, tune in! Because this guy, he, he runs this place called the Actors Studio in New York, and it, he is this guy with the very stench, the stench of failed actor coming off of him. <laughs> Just so, so strong that if somebody was standing behind him, they would have that wavy, kind of hot desert highway look from the heat waves coming up. That's how powerfully, powerfully, the stench of failed actor comes off of James Lipton. Now, don't clap! What? Don't, don't! No! Stop it! Wait a minute, I want to do something so they can't cut this bit together. Wait a second, let me do this. <laughs> wait a second. Okay, wait a minute. So now they have to cut this bit. Okay. Now. All right, so he'll have actors and actresses on. The most amazing segment was the Paul Newman segment. A, a guy whose work I like. But Paul Newman is sitting there, and uh, he goes, he looks at this, at this big audience of students and glowers at them and goes, you know, if you want to be an actor, you've got to get out there and act. You've got to, you've got to be out there looking for work. You can't be hanging out in the drugstore. And... Whoa, wait a minute, the drugstore? What are you, what? Having a phosphate? What the f are you talking about, you old fart? If you're going to act, you better be serious or you may as well go and sell buggy whips, damn it! Go to your damn ether frolics and read the latest serialized Fitzgerald and Colliers! Damn it, are you kids? All right, now play some giant monster music for me as I advance across the bridge, Merman. I'm gonna do this, here we go, ready? Uh -huh. preferred card for comics come home. Coming up, Bobcat Goldthwait. <laughs> okay. Well, we've come to the end of our show. We have one more superstar left for you. 
another San Francisco legend. He has starred in Police Academy. He's written and directed and starred in Shakes the Clown. He's been all over David Letterman, Conan O'Brien. He does everything. He's fantastic and wonderful and delightful. Please welcome Bob Goldthwaite. <laughs> and I wanted to go up on the bridge. I thought I was just going to climb up there and f*** up traffic like Woody Harrelson. <laughs> ah. Oh, well, where shall I start? I can't believe I'm going to be the official hack here tonight and bring up the first Marv Albert reference. <laughs> I would like to see the Marv Albert Mike Tyson fight. <laughs> Like I was sitting around with a bunch of guys in the, and we were gonna watch the fight and then uh, and then and then as a nation We got blue balls for violence because we we're all going all right. It's gonna be good It's gonna be really good and violent and then he bit his ear and they went whoa <laughs> That's weird man <laughs> See like He was a convicted rapist. He was still qualified <laughs> To box. Then he bites the guy. Hey, hey, he can't box anymore, man. <laughs> no. That guy's dangerous, man. He's out of control. He's crazy. He's biting people. <laughs> With that line of reasoning, he could have went out and f Holyfield. <laughs> and they would have kept the fight going. <laughs> He didn't bite him or nothing. <laughs> We're deducting two points for him. <laughs> oh, man. I'm back in the Bay Area, which is, uh, I, I don't know. So far this whole evening, everybody's talked about San Francisco, and they've talked about gays, as if that's the only thing you're known for. <laughs> San Francisco, we sure got a lot of queers. <laughs> What really cracked me up is back there working that thing is real, real hippies. <laughs> there really are two hippies back there. And I'm like, look at that, going, look at that quaint look at that hippies, man. Oh, wow, all right. So, I don't know. Not that I, I, I'm wearing a sweater and all the comics are going, oh, you should wear that out there. And I'm like, I don't know. I like it, but. Now, if I, if I take the sweater off, then we really can't cut any of this <laughs> I lost a lot of weight. I didn't take off my sweater to show you that. But I had a woman come up to me. She goes, I don't want to insult you, but you look like Bobcat Goldthwait. I'm like... <laughs> I was in Texas where I was performing at a college. And at the college, well... They had this horse and he ran down the field after every touchdown. He's like, da -da 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 -da. and they made this poor animal wear like a little fast. Da -da 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 -da. And then the horse kind of went nuts and uh, he ran right into a wall. Da -da 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 -da. And he cracked his head open. He was like, and he fell down. He's like, ah, 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 ah. and he drops dead right in the middle of the game. Yeah, it was homecoming. And then I had to do a show about two hours later. I'm like, how bad does your team suck when the mascot commits suicide? <laughs> and the whole school's like, boo! Like, like, even the boo had a southern accent? Boo! I go, what happened? Did the coyote paint a tunnel on the wall? <laughs> I really was thinking about running around on top of the, <laughs> the Golden Gate Bridge to close. Then I was thinking about knocking over some of the stone, these things, and I thought, no, 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 no. I'm still on, I'm still doing community service work. <laughs> Actually, they're not that heavy. I like, try to match that. Look at that. <laughs> Doing that with my mind. <laughs> I'm not gonna break anything. I've done enough PSAs. <laughs>
So the Tonight Show on Fire, that was my, that's what I had to do, commercials. See, if you break the law, you don't have that luxury, you know, because I'm like a JV celebrity. I, I got to do commercials. I had $4,000 worth of fines, but I also had to do these commercials like, Hi, I'm Bobcat Goldthwait, and if you're ever on a talk show, don't set it on fire. <laughs> Back to you, McGruff. <laughs> and here's your old friend, Kelsey Grammer, with some safe driving tips. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what Penny Marshall and Rosie O'Donnell did to that Kmart that they're working on. <laughs> okay, this is uh, in honor of all my attire. I'm all the village people, and it's Bono from U2. That's very topical. Thank you. Oh, stop. Uh, singing a uh, village people song. I don't know why I got to introduce it to you. you well, whatever. I'm going to turn around, and then I'm him. Because I, I watch, I see the guys, they do the impressions. They turn around and they, they go, wow, he's him. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you guys don't, you, know, I, you can't follow because I can't sing. But I got <laughs> Oh, yeah, if you got reverb, you might need it because I'm toned up. I wasn't him. I know I turned around. I just choked early. <laughs> <laughs> this is a song. This is a song you two stuff from the village people and it's not we're gonna steal it back. <laughs> this is not a rebel song, this song is YMCA. <laughs> young man, there's no need to feel down or say young man. Pick yourself off the ground or say young man. Put you in a strange sound. There's no need to be all happy, young man. There's a place you can go. I say, young man. When you're short on your toe, you can stay there. Hold on to your phone. Many ways to have a good time. It's when you stay at the wall, at the wall.